Hi, and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio and tonight's YouTube Live. My name is Lisa Curcio. Whether you're joining me for the first time or you've been here before, I'm so glad that you've come by for tonight's Fun Fold card. In addition to the Fun Fold, I've got some great tips for you tonight, including some masking techniques as well as some coloring techniques. And as always, I'm going to give you lots of tips along the way. Now, before we get started, I have a couple housekeeping items I would like to go over with you. Whether you're watching the replay or you're here for the live, you can read or interact with the live chat. And that is by logging into your YouTube account, which is your Gmail address. That's the only way you're gonna be able to chat or read what's happened during the live. Once this video is over, I am going to come back. You're gonna to need to give me about 20, 30 minutes. And underneath the title of this video, you'll see my name. And below that, there will be some text. You'll need to click the words show more to expand the text in order to find the link where I'll place the pictures, cutting dimensions, and supplies for tonight's fun fold card. Also, this is typically a point in time where I would introduce you to Megan, my virtual assistant, but Megan can't be with us tonight and we are going to miss her, but she will be back, I promise, next time. We are going to miss her, especially because while I'm stamping, it is impossible for me to try to keep up with your comments, but please don't stop chatting because once the live is over, I do come back once this video has rendered on YouTube and I read every single one. If you have questions that are not answered by fellow viewers, I'll make sure that I pin those comments to the very top of the comments here on YouTube so that you can have your question answered. Okay, I think we're all ready. Let's go ahead and get started on tonight's project. I'm gonna turn the camera down. Thanks for your patience. Let me get you guys all zoomed in here. You can see we're gonna start with that trimmer. Fun fold cards always include extra score lines and this one is no exception. There are multiple pieces to this card and none of them are difficult. And like I said, underneath the words show more, underneath the title and my name, you'll need to expand the text after the live is over. I need about 30 minutes to get all that detail in there. There'll be a link near the bottom, and if you click on that, it'll lead you over to the pictures, cutting dimensions, and supplies. I'm starting with a piece of crumb cake cardstock. This measures five by five and a half. This is the five and a half size. That's the side we're gonna to need to make sure that we have this mirrored up to the base of our card. I'm gonna make this score line at three quarters of an inch. I love my paper trimmer because there's a scoring blade. There's also a cutting blade and you can see that they navigate up and this one goes down out of the way, which makes it really easy to use. The clear cutting guide is going to ensure that you can read the cutting dimensions below it as well. You'll be able to find this in my online store. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line this up at the three quarter inch mark and I'm gonna do that on this side just to make it easier so I have a little bit more to hold here. And then I'm gonna close that and I'm gonna slide my scoring blade, and that's gonna give us that score line. Believe it or not, this is the only score line that you're going to need beside the base of the card. And I did that right before you joined me because that's pretty straight up. This is five and a half by eight and a half. I scored it in half at four and a quarter. So we've got our two pieces here. Now there's a third piece to this project, and let me just get my trimmer out of the way. I'm gonna to need to bring that back and forth a little bit tonight. And I've got my grid paper here. I'm hoping that, yep, I think I'm inside your camera view. I'm gonna be using this area down here in the bottom left corner of my grid paper. I love my grid paper. The reason specifically is because I can't do too many things straight. So these grid lines really help me to do that. In addition to that, when I'm gonna be doing something like I'm doing tonight with this extra layer, I need to be able to do some measuring and that's gonna help save me some time by not measuring both ends of my cardstock. Let me show you what I mean. Here's that piece that we just scored. Here's that score line. Just like with any fun fold, you're gonna wanna come in with your bone folder and you're gonna reinforce those creases because you want a really nice crisp card. Make sure that this is folded to the back for this next step. I'm gonna lay that down here in the bottom corner. Now I'm in a tight spot here. I'm gonna try to move this up so you can see. I think you can see good. Down here in the corner, there's a ruler both on the left and on the bottom. This grid paper is also available in my online store. I love it. So what I'm doing is I'm carefully aligning this to those edges so that I have accurate score marks. There's only one dimension that you need to remember for this whole portion. 
and that's two and three quarters inches. So I've got my pencil here and right here at the bottom, I'm gonna come over here to two and three quarters and I'm gonna make a little pencil mark so that I know where that is. Now I know that might be very difficult to see in the video, but I don't want that to be obtrusive when I'm done with this. You can follow this straight up here with the grid paper. I always like to take a ruler and just make sure that I haven't lost my spot. And there we go, we've got that. And I can see that that grid line now is going to follow right up here. Do you see the grid line here? And I'll make my other line. So we've got two and three quarters at each side. The grid paper is going to allow you not to have to turn the paper, which makes this so much easier. The other tick mark is gonna be at two and three quarters of an inch as well. So I'm gonna come up here to two and three quarters of an inch. Do you see it here? And we're gonna make another line here. All right, so we've got three little lines on this piece of paper. Again, I know that's probably difficult to see. Just remember two and three quarter inches. All right, let me move that off to the side because now I'm bringing back the paper trimmer. This time I'm gonna bring the cutting blade up because we're gonna do some cutting. Remember we folded this to the back? Let's go ahead and open this up so it's flat, so it's easier to use. And all we need to do now is connect the dots. So from this tick mark to here and this to here. So this area here is gonna say straight. So let me open this up. I am looking to navigate that tick mark inside this dark cutting groove. Now I'm gonna move you in a little bit closer so you can see a little bit better. I know some of the trimmer probably is not gonna be in the camera view, but I wanted to show you how it's lined up. So that tick mark is gonna to have to fall in that cutting track. Okay, I'm gonna start here at the center point. Remember there's a tick mark here and here and there's one here at the center. So I'm gonna connect this one to this one. So I'm gonna tip my trimmer like so. I'm trying to get this all in your camera view and it's a little challenging, but I think we're pretty close. All right, so we've got this one here and this one here. Don't be afraid to pivot your cardstock so that it's in the right dimensions of the, of the cutting track. I'm gonna close that arm and then I'm going to cut. We're gonna take this piece and we're gonna throw that away. I'm gonna turn this now and I'm gonna do the exact same thing on this side. So let me just turn it this way. I think it'll be easier for you. So I'm gonna connect this tick mark to this point. So I'm gonna line this up. Again, looking to make sure that those tick marks are inside my cutting track. We'll close that door and then we'll slice. And that's gonna give us this, okay? This is what we need to make that swing front panel for the front of this fun fold card. All right, let me move the trimmer out of the way because we're not gonna need that again. And then what I'm gonna do now is let me bring in another die. This is where we're gonna do a little bit more work. We are going to create an opening on the front of this. This is what I call a peekaboo window. And this is from the layering squares dies. I really, really, really like these because look at the graduation of sizes. Not only do you get the plain squares, but you're going to get the scallop squares as well. These are in the annual catalog. I know we can cut a square, but when you're doing a fun fold card like this, that's going to have an opening. Having a die is so much easier. I want to give you a tip about this. Now, you can go ahead and put this on your cutting platform and put it through your die cutting machine. But if you've ever had difficulty with this slipping and you know that's going to be challenging because we need this to be symmetrical. I want to tell you about these little post-it note flags. I love these, or even post-it notes. I'm also going to mention that I have had difficulty with washi tape. I love washi tape, but when I've used it to anchor down on my cardstock and I pull it off, sometimes it rips it a little bit. If you've reused your washi tape where some of that tackiness has been depleted, that'll work a little bit better. So what you're looking to do is just kind of get a visual alignment for these sides here and here. I also want you to watch here. You wanna make sure that this is not too shallow, that it's gonna impede on that crease line that we made. So if you have to, scoot this over a little bit and give yourself a little bit more room here. And I'm looking and then I'm gonna tap that right across here to hold that die in place. And then here to hold my die in place. Now this is ready for my die cutting machine and I don't have to worry about this shifting. All right, now I did that before because I didn't wanna drag the die cutting machine in and out, but let me pull that one out so you guys can see it. And here it is. All right, remember, this is that flap we scored. So this is gonna go like this. Now, let me show you how this comes together. Let me just zoom you out a little bit better so you have a better view. This is the card base. Remember, I told you we scored this in half and I'm gonna fold it. 
And just like before, I'm going to come across it with my bone folder because I want that nice crisp edge on this. I'm going to be using my silicone craft sheet to put these pieces together. I love this because liquid glue, hot glue, and adhesive will not stick to it. If it gets on here, you just rub it right off. It's going to keep my work surface sticky free, which is a great accompaniment when you're crafting, especially if you're in a small area where you don't have a lot of work room. This piece is going to get adhered to the back of this card here. Now, I want to tell you something. I have made several of these, and I have found that this piece and this piece being the same color is going to make the back side look not so noticeable. So I'm going to recommend that. Of course, it doesn't mean you can't experiment, but just keep that in mind. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up the inside. Remember, this is the front. This is the inside of the card. And inside this three-quarter inch score area, I'm going to lay my adhesive generously. Now, if you prefer liquid glue, that'll work. Of course, if you like tear and tape, that works. But this is cardstock to cardstock. And I found that this works really, really well. My adhesive worked perfectly. All right, the next thing is this. This is only going to go to the back half of this. Now, I prefer to put this panel on the left-hand side so I can use this with my right hand since I'm right-handed. And then what I like to do is I kind of like to tip this. You don't want to make this so tight in that score line or that crease that the card won't bend. So I'm looking to align it here along the edges the best that I can, and then I'll press that in place. All right, so now you can see how big this has gotten, but this is how it's going to work. This is going to fold over, and this is going to come across the top. And then just to reinforce that, I'm going to come back over it with my score, with my bone folder to go over that score line. Now I've got lots of tips for you about this as we move on through the card. But let's now go ahead and add a panel of designer series paper here. Of course, you can go ahead and stamp it, but I decided to use this beautiful paper. My card tonight is an Easter card, but please keep in mind that your fun fold can be any theme you want whatsoever. So the fun fold itself can be adapted to birthday cards, graduation cards, anniversary cards, and so on. This is from the um, Bird Ballad Designer Series paper. Isn't it pretty? Double-sided gives you lots of options. You'll see that one side has a theme conducive to the name, and the other side is more generic, which means that you can use it all year round on all different types of cards. So I'm going to open this up to make it easier for my hand, and then I'm looking to center this on the front panel of my card base. And then once I'm happy with it, we'll go ahead and we'll tack that down. All right, so once again, this is going to go like this. This area here is where we're going to decorate. Now, I decided to use another piece of um, Whisper White cardstock. This is going to be thick Whisper White cardstock now. And I die cut this from that exact same die set. It's just a little bit smaller than the opening of this card. And that's on purpose so that we can create that peekaboo view. All right, I'm going to zoom you in a little bit closer so that you can see better. Bear with me here. Okay. And then we're going to do some stamping on here. Very important that you stamp on the diagonal. I know intuitively we want to turn it and make it straight, but it needs to be on the diagonal. And since this is an Easter card, I decided to pull out this adorable bunny image. And I want to show you where this comes from. This is from the stamp set called Welcome Easter. Now, I want to call your attention to this stamp set. In addition to these adorable images, and of course, we've got some Easter greetings, there's other things in here. We've got baby and we even have friend and there's some adorable other images here. Now hang with me to the end of the video because I have four other samples to share with you using this exact same stamp set. I don't know about you, but I have a huge plethora of stamps that have flowers and butterflies on them. This was a great addition for me because not only can I use it for Easter, but I can use it for baby cards and just for cards outside of the box, just something different. And because I didn't want the image to be too dark, I'm gonna to choose to stamp it in the basic gray ink versus black. So I've got a basic gray pad here. I think I just stuck my finger in there, that figures, huh? All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna ink that up in that basic gray pad. I'm gonna check it, make sure I got it covered. I do, keeping this on the diagonal. And this now is gonna go inside that square. All right, so now we have our bunny. I'm just gonna set that off on my grid paper. Gonna move my ink pad off to the side. Actually, you know what? I'm in a tight space, so I'm actually gonna close up. I am not gonna color the whole thing with you because I've already got one that's done.
but I want to walk some of you through the coloring process when I'm using the Stampin' Blends alcohol-based markers. Now, I know that's new for some of you, not new for me, but I absolutely love, love, love these markers because they give you a professional finish with ease. Now, you're going to see that there's a light and a dark for each color, and you can buy them individually or as a color group, which is what I like to do. They are dual-ended, so one is thick and one is thin. Depending on what you prefer, you can use whatever you'd like. I like to use the lightest shade first. That's not a rule. That's just a Lisa thing. I'm going to start down here on his paw, just because this is a fairly larger area, and I think you can kind of see it. So with the light area, I'm going to make that paw this light pink. All right. Like I said, I'm not going to color the whole thing. The alcohol in here needs to evaporate before I go and I add some detail with that darker color. Now, while that's happening is when I like to proceed through the rest of my image. And I'm going to work just in this area right here. Again, I'm not going to do the whole thing. I've got the light crumb cake and I'm going to color in his leg. I'm just going to do the thigh area here so you get an idea of how this works. All right, and maybe up the big toe. I just wanna give you enough area that you can actually see how the shading is done. The great thing about this is you don't have to be a professional colorer. It, it's really, really quite easy and quite forgiving. Now you'll remember that I said that this needs to evaporate a little bit before you lay that next color. And this is the darker shade. And I'm just gonna pick one side to make darker. I have never taken professional coloring classes. This is just, just by practice. So I don't profess that I totally know what I'm doing. I just love to color because I find it really, really therapeutic. Just like before, that's gonna need a few seconds for that alcohol to evaporate. And while it is, I'm gonna come back over here to that crumb cake. And this time I'm gonna use the darker shade. And I'm gonna use the brush tip on this just because I like it a little bit better. And I'm gonna add a little bit of dark highlights here along the outside of his body and a little bit down the paw. This is a really small area, okay? So I'm not gonna put a whole lot of color. Again, like before, it's got to evaporate. While it's doing that, I wanna show you how these are gonna to blend together. So I'm gonna work the light and the dark together. And as it evaporates, you're gonna get more of its true tone. The same thing here. Let me just show you quickly. You want to pull from the dark into the light. The worst thing you can do is lay down too much coverage without allowing this to evaporate. Once it does, it's going to become more of its true tone. And you can see here already, you can see it's a tad darker here and lighter here. So you've got to pull those colors together. Now, I told you I had one that was already done. So let me just pull that out. And here it is. Isn't this cute? So I used that petal pink color for a little bit inside of the breast so that he wasn't so brown and it coordinates beautifully with the designer series papers. One of the things I absolutely love about Stampin' Up! products is the color coordination. You've got to love that. So you don't have any guesswork involved in when you're creating your projects. Now let me go ahead and zoom out just a little bit more so that you can see this card get put together. This image is eventually going to go through the peekaboo opening. But I want to talk to you about the next step before I get too far. And I'm going to add a greeting. And it's going to be from that same stamp set. And it's called, it says Happy Easter. But do you see how it's all one word? Well, I want to split these words up. And I want to put them here and here. And I've got a cheat mechanism that works really, really good. Now, you could certainly take your dye-based marker, not your alcohol marker, your dye-based marker, and color in just one word. You would breathe on the stamp and then stamp it. By huffing your breath on the stamp, it re-moistens the ink to make sure that the dye base doesn't dry. But I've got a way that actually works better that's going to allow us to use this, the ink pad. I don't know if you've ever noticed this or not, but if you use your dye base marker on your greeting and you stamp it, it tends to be lighter. And I wanted this to be darker simply because I chose the gray versus a black. So I'm going to put that ink pad right off to the side. I'm going to open this up to make it nice and flat and easier for my hand. Here is my words. Now, here's the trick. I am pulling off a piece of household scotch tape. On one end, I want you to make a little tab so you have something to pull when you go to take this off. Since I know I'm doing the word happy first, I'm going to cover up the word Easter. I'm going to stick this end right here to the block so that it's secure. Do you see how this is ready for us to pull off? You're only gonna mess this up once. So when you're gonna try this technique, do it on scratch paper. 
because the very first time I experimented with this, I did it wrong. After you ink this, you have to remove this before you stamp it. Like I said, you'll only do that mistake just once, but this works really, really good. And again, the greeting has to be far enough apart that the tape will actually work. And really 99% of them are really set up well for this. So here is my ink pad. I'm gonna ink this up. And then here we go, we've got that tab. I'm gonna pull that right off. Do you guys already see it? And then I'm gonna turn it here. I'm gonna try not to get my head in the camera. And then we're gonna stamp our words. So now we have happy, all right? Now let me clean this right off camera. I have my stamp and scrub. You may be using a stamp and chamois. One of the things I wanna tell you about too, is you wanna make sure that there's no residual ink left on your stamp when you are done. Because if there's any pigmentation here, um, it can transfer. So you just wanna be really, really careful. I'm just stamping it off on my scratch paper on the side. And now I'm taking another piece of that household tape. I'm making a tab. And this time I'm covering up the word happy. All right. And then we're gonna tack that down like before. So we've got a tab here we can pull. Here comes the ink pad. We're gonna ink that up. I'm checking it. It looks good. I'm pulling that off. That's going right in my trash can. And then I'm gonna stamp the word Easter going this way. And again, trying to get my head in your view. There we go. So now we have happy and Easter all where I want them using one stamp and an actual ink pad versus a marker to get that intensity of that color that I really wanted. All right, that was just a great tip for you. I hope that you'll be able to find that useful. It's also a great way for you to pick up just one word or a sentence on any of the stamps that you already own to add them to your cards. Okay, so now we've got this here. Let's go ahead and let's add our image. This is our bunny. I'm gonna flip that over and on the back side, I'm gonna be using my full size dimensionals. These are pre-cut pieces of foam tape that make my life so easy so I don't have to gunk up my scissors. And then I'm gonna take my paper piercing tool, which is on the attachment to my take your pick tool. Love the putty tip on here too. But this is gonna help me pull off those paper backings I love too that it helps wrangle them all in one place. So that makes the cleanup a lot easier. And then this now is going to go right through the opening of this card. Don't attempt to do this with this flap open. Otherwise, you'd have to make pencil marks. You have to erase. And who wants to do that? So I'm going to come right inside of here. I'm going to line it up to make it as symmetrical around that frame as possible. And we're going to tack that in place. Now let's do the inside. And then I'm going to talk to you about the closure. So on the inside of the card, obviously I wanted to decorate it. And I did do this part ahead of time because I didn't dare try to stamp this in front of you because my head at my age needs to be really, really close. So I did use those greetings from a different stamp set. And this stamp set is called A Wish for Everything. And it is definitely well stated for its name. There is literally something for everything. Words for the inside and the outside, and you can custom build the phrases for the greetings that you'd like. Really, really like this. I'm going to go ahead and flip that over. There's my boo-boo side. How many of you have ever done that? Look how nice and crooked that was. So you know what? Why waste the paper? I turned it right over. I wanted to share that with you because oftentimes people say, I'm wasting a lot of paper. What am I doing wrong? Flip it over. Good quality cardstock means you're going to be able to flip it over and it's not going to peek through, so there's no waste. And then I'm just going to mirror this. This is a one eighth of an inch border all the way around. And then I'm going to flip that over one more time, and we're going to add some adhesive here. This now is going to go on the inside of the card. Remember, I've got cutting dimensions for you, and I've got four more cards coming up with the stamp set that I can't wait to share with you. This is going to go right inside. Again, I'm looking to make it straight, and I'll tuck that down. All right, so this comes in and this comes over. Now let's talk about the closure. There are several things you can do here. I have seen where you can put a button here, which means this flap would kind of tuck behind the button. I chose not to do that because obviously a button would mean extra postage, a little extra padding in the envelope. I was looking for a quick, easy way that I could mail this without having to create a handmade envelope, without having to do additional postage. And you know what? This worked so slick. I'm just gonna reinforce this now with my bone folder now that my card is all done. And I'm gonna do this, a glue dot. Now, if you're skeptical, watch me. I've got a tip for you. 
I have another one that I made several weeks ago and it is still staying shut. So here is the glue dot here. I've pulled this back to reveal it. And all I'm doing is I'm taking that point and I'm putting it right on top of that glue dot and I'm lifting. Do you see it here? What you need to do is break down that tackiness because you don't want it to rip the card as you're opening and closing it. I'm taking it right off camera. I know you can't see this. And I just put it right on my blue jeans just to make it a little bit less tacky. So this is going to come down and this is going to go over and then you're going to press and that's going to hold your card in place. Great for it coming in and out of the envelope. And here's the other great thing. It opens right up and it seals shut again. So you don't have to monkey with an embellishment that might require extra postage. If you're going to hand deliver your cards, buttons are a great way here to do this. And if you want to get really fancy, you can put some ribbon behind the image panel and then tie it here. There's lots of different ways. I would love to know what you would do. So leave me a comment below. Now, let me show you the other cards I made creating um, using this exact same stamp set. But this is a really fun fold. Change up the image, change up your greetings, and you're going to have lots and lots of fun with this. Super, super easy. All right. These next cards that I'm going to share with you are all using the exact same stamp set I just shared, which is called Welcome Easter. Again, well beyond Easter. And I love that because my artillery of stamps often doesn't have other things. I have a lot of flowers and a lot of butterflies. And this not only gives me greetings, but it gives me images I can use throughout the year. These cards are all part of my monthly card making kit, which actually debuted today. My card making kit is free in exchange for a $50 product order using the exclusive card making kit host code. When we're all done, give me a few minutes and I'll go ahead and put that link down in the comments below so that you can find it. But you're going to get the free pre-cut supplies to make a total of eight cards. I'm going to show you all of them. You'll get the free pre-cut cardstock. You're going to get punched pieces, die cut pieces. You're going to get step-by-step -step instructions in a PDF format as well as in a video format. So these are my two Easter cards. And then I have two baby cards that are part of this month's card kit. Aren't these cute? So yes, you're going to get the designer series paper. All the layers are cut and ready for you to go. The video is going to allow you to stamp with me from home, working at your own pace. You can start and stop as often as you'd like. And then here are the last two. Super cute. And I use the sweet friend for this one. And again, you can customize these at home. Now, I want to share a few other things about this card kit with you. Let me turn the camera around. This is a great time to be able to enjoy the card kit because with a $50 order, I'll give you the free pre-cut supplies, video and PDF tutorial, but you're going to get two other things. Because it's Stampin' Up's largest sale of the year, with a $50 product order, you're entitled to a free product from the sale brochure of your choice. You'll be prompted during the, um, uh, the online ordering in order to make that selection. In addition to that, you're also going to receive a private invitation to an event I call Live with Lisa. It is held here on YouTube with a private link. And it's just my way of saying thank you for your order. During that event, I do several live demonstrations. I give you a huge bundle of tutorials. There's eight of them. And I do random prize giveaways for product. It's lots of fun. It's in a smaller group, so it's very personal and it's really quite engaging. Now, I will tell you, too, that your card making kit order has to use the exclusive card making kit host code. If you do not use the card making kit host code, I have no way of knowing that you're entitled to the free pre-cut supplies, the video and the PDF tutorial. That is imperative. Now, this card making kit ordering period ends this Saturday, which is March 14th or while supplies last. So if it sells out before March 14th, that's it. I only have so many kits. And already today, we're about mm, three quarters of the way. I'm looking at the time of the first day of ordering, and it's done extremely well. I think that there's a good chance it can sell out before Saturday the 14th. So please, if you're interested, go ahead and place your order now. At the very minimum, you may want the stamp set. But guess what? You can order whatever you like. Um, I make the ordering process very flexible. Use what you have at home. Use the coloring medium that you prefer at home because you're going to get all the pre-cut supplies in order to make the cards. Now, I want to also point out that I have a huge inventory of complimentary catalogs I would love to give you if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. 
All you have to do is head over to lisasstampstudio.com, click on contact me and provide me with your information and we'll be ahead and get those in the mail to you. I do send those out priority mail and they are complimentary. I would love to share the ideas in these books with you. Also, if you have enjoyed today's video, a couple things. I would love for you to give it a thumbs up here on YouTube because it certainly helps. You're going to want to subscribe because I'm going to be back live with you on Monday. I'm looking at my calendar. Make sure I get the date right. It is March 23rd at 8 p.m. Eastern time. If you click the small bell image that's next to the subscribe button, you'll get reminders and notifications about that live event so that you won't miss it. Head over to my website at lisasstampstudio.com. Sign up for my weekly free e-newsletter where I share a tutorial, not shared on my other platforms. Lots of ways for me to inspire and connect with you. I am so glad that you were with me. We missed Megan tonight, but I will be back to read all those comments. I'll make sure if you had questions that I pin them to the top of the comments here on YouTube so that it's easy for you to find. Give me about 30 minutes to do that so that the video can render and everything will be there for you. I look forward to having you join me back again for a live on the 23rd, and I hope that you'll join us for the March card making kit. Have a great evening, everyone. Bye-bye.